Okay, hello everyone, welcome to another Sour and Custom Races build order video. Uh, I'm playing against Terran. He's, uh, I've seen him in a couple of public lobbies so far. I asked him to, if he wanted to uh, be my opponent in this guide, so he's been nice enough to agree. So let's hop straight into it. What on earth? I'll set my status to busy. <laughs> Um, there you go. Okay. Okay, so, this is a build order that I've been using, um, for a few months now, I think. I think it's much better, well, maybe not much better, but I think it's better than the previous build. Uh, that I had. The only matchup I wouldn't use this in is Cave is Khan versus Chiron, so KVK, because Umbra is a much more important early game in that matchup. But uh, in every other matchup, it's probably the better build. Though this was originally made for Chiron versus Genotron. Uh, I quickly realized. Hang on a second. This is just a better build order. <laughs> but uh, anyways, start up our evi ed evidence. Our edifice, as normal, we rally down our 18th Not worker to start our citadel. Continue making workers, for example, like against Terran or anything, you won't need to cut workers to make a sanctum because we can already make a range unit, the vault, defensively. Uh, as soon as we have money, so make a second worker, but as soon as money allows, we will then make a sanctum. Never stop producing workers, and then immediately we'll get a formulator as well. Now, essentially, we're just going to stick on one gas for a little while. We don't really need the second gas because Chiron is so limited by minerals. There's no, you know, unlike Protoss, they need to stick around to build their structures, but unlike Terran, they don't have the mule. So they're much more limited when it comes to resources in the early game. Um, well, this is a little bit late, but we should start up our second edifice so we can get a very nice uh, biological unit count out. Uh, I think you want to get do this whether you're playing mech or bio, uh, like like a more Chiron heavy mech kind of style that is. Again, it's like a Reaper would make two volts, so I'll just simulate that now. But of course, you don't necessarily need to do this in all matchups. This is really just against any light pressure. A third volt doesn't hurt either, but you don't really want to be going over more than three if you can avoid it. Now once we have 100 gas, we want to be starting up our Elysium. Um, if you can avoid making unit production, by the way, you could make a third edifice already, but because obviously we're just making these units for safety, we're going to start up our third edifice now. Uh, once we have 100 gas, we're going to start Modified Gate, and then we're going to start Exalted Shields. Um, now I'm not super sure, because... Because there's no protein, there's no um, way for us to know exactly how much units that we need, like the precise number of production and units that we need, compared to the precise amount of, you know, like like there's nothing. We don't know how many productions we need, facilities we need to safely expand. Basically, was is what I'm trying to say. I would say three is fairly safe, though it's certainly much more focus, like economically focused. If you really want to be safe, going up to four is probably better. Um, I'm going to start up Exalted Shields now. If you want to just play completely defensive, you could probably just skip this and wait until late in charge. But uh, especially if you want to go for more of a timing, uh, you're going to be attacking with these two upgrades. Now we're not going to have too many units because we started our third base so quickly, right? So this attack is just more to poke, see what they have, make sure they're not being greedy, keep them honest, but also just slip into to see if we can find any worker kills. A bit like Zerg, how they kind of make a round of lings at like 52 workers or so. Um, Insufficient. Like, like them, we want to be just kind of like you, you just just keeping these alive just making them a little bit for safety making them a little bit to keep our opponent honest make sure they don't cut too many corners and a little bit just to simply um what you call it 
See if we can get any worker kills that are out of position potentially. So like, if there's any workers rallying between bases, potentially you might be able to catch one of them. Um, or you might come in from one angle, and then uh, with some of your pariahs, and then attack from another with another very small group of pariahs. And with that, you'd be able to potentially just get a couple worker kills. Uh, but doesn't matter too much. We're going to go up to four gases. Three gases is probably acceptable as well. Um, we're going to attack now. A little bit late with this attack. Could have moved it uh, slightly quicker. Um, but yeah, as we see, he's here. We're just going to check his third base, this other third, to see if uh, he's taken that. If he hasn't, we'll just leave him alone. There's no point in attacking into this two base setup where there's no really angles for us to exploit. We're going to start a refoundry, by the way. Um, and then go into just add on more production. He doesn't have a third base, so we're just going to keep this here. This here, just get some vision around the map. Add on more and more production. Okay, he's over here now. Once he, once we see a third base, we'll expand to a fourth of our own. Okay, he has invested into that money. Ah, uh, that that money into that uh, fourth, I should say. And we're just going to continue making bio at this point. You could, you could uh, transition much quicker to latent charge if you want to. Uh, I'll, I'll go over the replay a little later and show you where the tech tech points are, the points in which you could uh, deviate your tech a little bit. Um, you know, you might want to go for a different style, a different army composition. This was very, very much so prior focused. Now with his fast biological strategies, adding on some Umbra because they're pretty fast, they give a little bit of extra punch to your army. So adding on uh, some Umbra can really help synergize a bit, I think. Oh, I completely forgot my upgrades. I will show those again later in the <laughs> later in the video when I go back over the replay. In this replay, we're gonna we're going into more of an atrium focus style. Now that we're banking up a bit a bit of gas, we we'll even add on another atrium. We will grab that. Let me select a converter. Okay, and then we just very comfortably. So you see here we're going to separate just a few pariahs. This is an incredibly important thing to, uh, when attacking with pariahs or zergens or really any melee units. Because your opponent is always going to just be running away from your units because of course your units are melee. Um, in order to account for that... Um, well, because your opponent's units are always running away, right? Your... Um, Your pariahs, your melee units, are always going to be zoning against your opponent. Okay, and because of that, you're going to want to exploit the fact that they're running away and zoning, and you're zoning against them. Um, so because of that, you want to exploit their positioning by then separating, just splitting off some units and then exploiting a different angle. Of course, you can't send your whole army to then attack to attack this undefended location because all of a sudden the they'll of course move their army. But as long as their army is moving away, because your army is chasing them, then that way you can, because of that, you can uh, split off some units. Now, I didn't explain that super cleanly or perfectly, but I think you can understand the meaning. So, can I go back about here? Okay, so I was about 100 minerals late with this. It doesn't matter too much because it won't delay your timing at all. It will probably slow you by maybe one pariah, one volt. It'll. The main reason you don't really want to um, accidentally delay these this second edifice at least is because, of course, uh, it'll make it harder to defend all ins or something like that because you, you won't have as much. 
uh, your production will just be slower for no reason. But uh, anyway, so from this point, from this point here, we can add on a second edifice, or we can add on a second sanctum to go for a more sanctums-based play. Now, sanctum styles, I think, are quite underused. With a sanctum focus play, what you want to be doing is you want to be making in making a few early subjectors because they're very fast, uh, especially you know the, the just the base unit without any upgrades. It comes out, it's already very fast. You want to get the range upgrade for them, and then you just want to just be kind of like kiting your opponent. For example, like a Terran opponent, uh, it, a ranged subjector. Like a subjector with range will actually outrange a bunker with marines, uh, so you can just poke at that really for some for some repairs against uh, genotron. A um, little bit less so because blitzes, in combination with the energy recharge, will really help to you know recharge the energy or whatever but if you ever think you can just you know get a little bit of free kills if your opponent can't really contest your map presence yet then you always just want to get subjectors and move out um, so they're the value over time unit with the sanctum style now the other unit of course is the pulsar and that unit is incredibly powerful in timings and in defending timings as well so if you're ever if you want to go commit more to a timing, then you want to be making more pulsars rather than subjectors. Probably just get three subjectors in range, and then just go into pulsar production. Um, though maybe if you're uh, playing against a zerg player and you don't really want to risk losing your subjectors to a lynx around, just skip the subjectors entirely, get a slightly quicker pulsar timing or something, you know? Um, but anyways, if you're going to go for a sanctum style, what you want to do is you want to start up second sanctum at the same time you would otherwise start up a second edifice. So also get a second gas, of course, because it's much more gas heavy. You still want to be getting your Elysium once money allows it. You don't really want to be making any units out of the sanctum if you can avoid it until you start. Actually, no, 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 I'm mistaken. You start one subjector. Then you start range, then you can continue making subjectors, maybe up to three. Then you start your Elysium, and then you can switch into Pulsar production. Don't make Pulsars until you've started an Elysium, okay? Because the Pulsar upgrade, Dampener, which you're going to want to have in your timings, um, requires an Elysium. So there's no real reason why you should just de be delaying that timing for no by making pulsars when your timing is focused around pulsars. Um, so don't don't make pulsars with sanctum style before your before you start an Elysium unless you're defending some kind of all-in perhaps. Anyway, if you go for your third. Edifice, you can go for more if you want to play safer, you, or if you want to play more or linny, you can go for less. I think once you start up your Citadel, at this point, I think adding on a fourth and fifth edifice, a sec, and uh, no, a second gas rather, then a fourth and fifth edifice, and then you probably want to have. Um, start one reliquary for plus one attack and then later on maybe probably um well definitely after you started to upgrades at least you could you could add on a foundry to tech into like an atrium kind of style or you could the other option if you want to really commit hard to the heavy bio is you just add on a second elysium you just stick on two or three gases i think three gases and you go for a high crux count, and then a high vault or pariah count as well, and then just stick it with those kind of two units. Because car and bio is perfectly fine. It's quite quite strong, I think. Um, yeah, if you do want to go bio though, certainly low gas count, so you don't really want to be going more than three, and then probably after your sixth edifice, you want to get expand to your 
fourth, and then just you want to be rapidly expanding, basically. Um, so yeah, I'll see if um, he wants to play for another game. Hello everyone, welcome back to the second part, uh, the second game in this build order guide. This is just for people who want to learn Sanctum style, because it is a bit more... Just, I just wanted to show you it. Uh, this is a replay as well. I played it a bit tighter in this game than I did in the last game. But um, yeah, it's mostly just to show what I mean. So we'll skip uh, what I mentioned earlier. So we'll skip through the first little segment, of course. Uh, everything is still normal. Now over here, this is when you start the second Sanctum. Um, unfortunately I was recording while I played this, but I didn't have my microphone turned on for it, for whatever reason. I don't know, I don't remember turning it off, but, um, oh well, it happens. But, um, anyways, uh, at this point I was saying you could either, it doesn't matter too much if they scout it, because it's so early on, there's not much... So like you could really like hiding it would make some much of a difference, but potentially if you're playing say like a series or you know the Terran tends to be pretty greedy, and like skip the bunker on the low ground, which is something that the Terran should always be doing against Chiron and against Protoss. Um, something you could potentially do is proxy the Sanctum. Doesn't matter any. You could just put it anywhere at all. You could just put it over here at your third. It might be a bit easier to scout maybe here. Um, I mean, this is 2000 atmospheres, it's not in the map pool anymore. Um, <laughs> but you could just put it literally anywhere, and it'll it'll work just fine, just normally. Um, and so then your opponent won't know it's double sanctum, and then immediately just make a couple pulsars, send them across the map. And if they don't have a bunker, you'll probably just win the game straight up. Because Terran just needs to make a bunker. Um, either way, you still should be pretty ahead if they... Don't make a bunker <laughs> pinged over here. Okay. Um, in this, I forgot to start the two vaults quick enough. Um, I wonder though if it's actually better to use to upgrade the citadel to charge it, and then just to use an energize. I'd say it's actually probably better because it's only 25 extra minerals, but it does get you a bit of extra income as well, and the reaper cannot kill anything while you have Energize active. Plus three shield armor is too much. The Reaper do would do two damage a shot. Okay, the Reaper's not doing any damage. Plus it gives a bit of uh, shield regeneration as well, so. Yep. You do need to make sure you start it early though. Once the Converter has lost its shields, even if you do activate Energize, the Reaper can, will still just get it because it won't have any shields to have armor from. And the regeneration doesn't quite kick in soon enough. Amplified Spears, it is quite late in this game. You do want to actually start this up before your first uh, subjector. Then you want to move across, probably three is not a bad number, two. Or if this finishes a bit earlier, just move, move across whenever it finishes. Um, but I just want to make sure my uh, I can keep my opponent a bit honest with these. So they do six, six, six range at the moment. Um, very nice movement speed as well, 4.2. Extremely microable. Extremely, uh, yeah, you, you can just kite with these forever. Of course, I wasn't playing super well in this replay. But, um, yeah, you can just do this. You know, I've got a bunch of free kills already. <sighs> I stopped paying attention for a second here. Um, uh, accidentally let my opponent get the CV surround, which is pretty well played by him. But even then, Still, still better for me. Like even the resources lost is better. But I, I also killed nine workers. Um, so honestly, this has uh, definitely been amazing for me. Um, this is what happens if you don't sp skip if the Terran <laughs> skips a bunker. Uh, once the Terran siege tank is out, though, you can't really poke anymore. I actually went for a second. In fact, I didn't realize that. Okay, go a little further forward. Um, pay attention, if you've been paying attention to the build, make sure you keep, uh, 
make sure you've been watching the production tab the entire time. But uh, I would go up to probably start the third base on two sanctums. You could do it on three. Um, but simply because your units are more expensive and you want to be making them more constantly. So you're already a bit safer against all-ins because you're more because you're already committing more to the unit production rather than the production facilities. Um, so you can just start up the third base a little bit sooner, I think. Uh, if you scout everything as normal. Then do then add on Sanctum 3 and 4. Uh, and two more reliquaries. Before that though, before you take your third, before all of that, make sure you start start either an outlet or a uh, Elysium. So if you want to do a three base push with 1-1, one, one, start an outlet, get a little bit of harass either with an Aperture or with an Aurora. Aurora is quite nice because you can have vision, but Aperture is good as well because it has a little more DPS when you put pulsars inside it. Plus, if you lose a pulsar but the Aperture is still alive, you can use Keyhole to quickly reinforce, just give it an extra pulsar and continue your little bit of harass. Um, you know, both, both are fine. And then afterwards you start your you start your Elysium and then you start your 1-1. One, one. So ideally you'd probably start your Elysium now. Oh wait, I've already started. Okay, that's good. <laughs> Never mind. But um, yeah, you do want to then start 1-1 one, one before you start uh, your Dampener. Because Dampener doesn't take as long. Uh, one one takes a lot longer to research, so you start that first, and you start dampening, and then you move out when all of those upgrades have been completed. Of course, you can see me unloading in the main base soon. I think. Yeah, I move in here, and then I move in to distract him at the front. He doesn't have a bunker, and he's actually, no, he has a siege tank up here, so. I back off. Probably could have gone around here, but I would risk getting surrounded and caught off. Uh, like I said earlier, I didn't play very well, so I just lose this. Not getting very much done. I did get four work kills. But, um, yeah. Then you want to go up to... As for the three base push, though, you want to go up to eight sanctums. Eight sanctums. Then start up your fourth base. I actually wonder if it's perhaps better to... To go up to six sanctums, start up your fourth, and then add two more. Because of how the car and supply works, you, you do find that you get supply blocked before you can before you actually push out, just simply because you don't have the supply for it. And pulsar is also a three supply, which is already quite supply heavy. And current sub, current timing attacks aren't. They don't work like the others can because you can't just continue adding on supply structures. It's production or nothing, you know. I uh, send these home and use an Energize to regenerate their HP and shields a bit. Uh, just making constant pulsars though. Let's start this. If you start it sooner, if you start it before Sanctum 7 and 8, then this will probably finish in time for you to get. Um, no. You'd have to start it around the same time as Dampener, I think. You'd start Dampener, then you'd start your fourth, and then the extra production. That way you'll be able to get the extra supply from the Citadel and then be able to make a couple more units. I'm not sure if that overall would make would make it a stronger timing though. I'd have to test that. Or you could test that yourself. Tell me in the comments. Yeah, these tanks are extremely exposed over here. I mean there's a nice firing line, but very exposed, so. And he's doing a double marine drop when he's has two factories and no marine upgrades, so I just come in here and I win this fight. Pulsars, of course, with the dampener, are very good at absorbing damage. Now, my opponent isn't a very high level or anything, he's just unranked at the moment. But yeah, the Sanger is in a good position though. Pulsars clean up marines, but those ones didn't have any upgrades, good so. But as you can see, pretty clean win. On the back of this, you want to be adding a foundry, taking up two uh, atriums, and so then you can go into myriads, because myriads synergize very well with subjectors. You know, you want to be transitioning away from the pulsar, I think, eventually, because the pulsar is a bit like a roach in a sense, a bit supply heavy, not super 
efficient in the higher supplies because it's slow and it doesn't have very much range. But it's tank it's it's tanky in a mid game fight scenario, plus has the dampener of course. And it has short range, can shoot while moving. So it makes it very strong. A lot of DPS. Makes it very strong in uh, timings. But um yeah, like mirrored, mirrored subjector is a much stronger thing. You could also uh, something else you could also do is you can just add on more ed uh, edifices. Just stick to eight, maybe even six sanctums, and then transition towards like a edifice-based composition, while you also transition towards these atriums. But um, yeah, I mean, r really, you can do whatever you want, but I think this is definitely the most the strongest and most solid approach. Uh, but you could also tech towards air, or tech towards an eco style, though. I don't think that's as good. Anyway, that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.